in the past, the networks were very much a uh, tiered structure where you had you know traffic flowing north to south. And when you have now these applications that are across servers and reaching to databases that are on the network, the traffic tends to be much more east-west. So what that has now created is a need to have these top of rack switches, these fabrics, have a lot of cross-sectional bandwidth. Cross-sectional bandwidth allows the application of these servers to talk to each other directly without having to go to a core or deeper into the network to actually get back to the resources that they need. So our, the switches that we deploy today are, are, are Trident line and uh, the one we just announced uh, at the end of this month, which is our high capacity um, 3.2 terabit Tomahawk device, will provide uh, the capacity that's needed by these next generation servers. In my career, I don't think I've seen so many new protocols come out so quickly <laughs> and get adopted so quickly. And, um, and you know, in the case of things like uh, uh, VXLAN and VGRE, you know, these are virtualization protocols for use in you know creating many many virtual overlays in, in the network. But at the same time, the um, the wide area protocols such as MPLS and and uh, GRE are now trying to get them you know trying to project themselves into the data centers because as I set up a hybrid cloud environment, I want to have my enterprise network be able to be projected into whatever cloud environment I'm, that I'm being hosted at. And typically that in the wide area, that's over some sort of MPLS or other VPN technology. So now the, the cloud service provider, the one that has a data center, has to work with the wide area service provider. They may be the same, it may be two different organizations, such that the customer's VPN is able to reach into that cloud data center and make that part of its virtual infrastructure. So that's now also creating these, you know, let's say, gateways that allow you to map one VPN protocol into another VPN protocol so that you have this ability to project. And uh, so the Broadcom switches that we're releasing now all have this ability to map tunnels into tunnels. So now you can have a boundary between one virtualized overlay that maps into another virtualized network such as the wide area. So I think that's going to be very important to be able to keep all these domains consistent from my enterprise into a cloud data center. We see the, uh, the data center now evolving in, in terms of speeds and feeds from a, let's say, 10 gig infrastructure to a 25 gig infrastructure. And Broadcom being a uh, founder of this uh, 25 gig consortium, as well as working on the 25 gig IEEE spec that's uh, underway. Um, we feel that 25 gig is a very economical way to now deploy vertical connections inside of the rack, and that allows you now to move that same 25 gig infrastructure to the horizontal via either 50 gig horizontal feeds or 100 gig horizontal feeds, depending on the capacity and oversubscription that the operator wants to deploy in their particular rack infrastructure. So now that will be followed by copper interconnects in the rack, potentially optical interconnects inside the rack, and optical interconnects horizontally from the top of the rack to the end of the row. And there's work happening in, in many different forms around the different optical interconnects around 100 gig that are being developed, as well as 400 gig. Now the, the IEEE is working on 400 gig technology, which will now be something that I think will leverage the same technologies of 25 and 50 gig, but obviously bundled into a much uh, fatter pipe than exists today. The, the ecosystem of NFV is really a, a combination of, of what I would call the existing OEMs, the ones that today are the ones that deploy networking gear, a set of new players that feel that they can get into this market by deploying their server class products, and a new set of players which are these independent surf software providers, these you know, ISVs. These are the, uh, the software that would now run on these, let's say, uh, um, standard servers or standard servers with standard offload. So now the ecosystem is really the hardware providers, the OEMs that create the, 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 the platforms, and now these software providers that bring the services, the functions in. And ultimately, I think even the, the actual service providers themselves, the, the telcos, let's say, will now feel empowered to actually write their own functions that run on this infrastructure because they're 
now feeling that they own part of the solution versus having it all just being handed to them by their OEMs. So Broadcom, you know, obviously we are a predominantly a semiconductor provider, but we also understand that there's a sea change happening where uh, customers want to buy, you know, let's say white box platforms or, or, or platforms that they can bring any software that they want to on top of it. So we work with a lot of different uh, manufacturers to provide reference designs that can be built and then these reference designs are then available to have third-party software put on from other software providers or software from Broadcom in, in the case of our iCost operating system. So, you know, we are participating in this market because we feel that, you know, this, there is a portion of the market that will adopt this, but we also understand that we can sell components to our OEMs that then build the entire system and sell it to the, the end customer. And I think there's different go-to-market models here and we're exercising all of them depending on who, well, how the end user wants to deploy their networks and, and have control of their networks, whether they want to have an OEM that provides a full turnkey service with a service contract, whether they want to kind of roll their own and have the expertise to actually deploy their own you know, network and, and software on top of that network. So you know, there's a lot of different models out there and we work with all our customers to, to enable those models. Uh, in the case of uh, OpenFlow, we have what we call our OpenFlow data plane extraction. This is a set of APIs that are OpenFlow compliant, and you can put any third-party agent on them, and then take in a reference design that um, we've worked with some several manufacturers on, put the OFDPA software on there, you can put a third-party agent on it, and then use OpenFlow to manage that switch. So full SDN-enabled uh, environment. What's occurred in the cloud is that you know cloud applications that may be more tolerant to things like latency and uh, you know um, you know restarts things like that have been fairly easily adopted. Things that are much more let's say uh, traffic critical, latency critical, things like you know voice, video that the video that, that's being used for you know real communication like video conferencing, all of a sudden are much more sensitive to the infrastructure that actually is used to deploy them. So being able to put a, let's say, a carrier grade service in a cloud environment, I think is very important. So maybe there's a terminology called carrier grade cloud that should be coined out there versus just cloud to kind of differentiate it from this like cloud where you just throw things in there, they run and you get results back and you don't really measure you know, these little things like latency and jitter and all these other things to what we would term a carrier grade cloud that provides services that people are typically used to under a normal hardwired telco infrastructure. And our switches are very key to that because you know low latency, high capacity, and an affordable cost are all drivers to make that happen. Obviously Broadcom is a leader today in the communications semiconductors and we're you know driving both um, the evolution of the switches in terms of you know more density, more capacity, uh, we're moving to some of the most advanced semiconductor nodes in the industry. At the same time, we're also developing high-performance server class ARM CPUs for use in both NFV and you know, future data centers. So we feel that you know, today, Broadcom is at the leading edge of the semiconductor technology that's going to enable all these next-generation cloud data centers and telco infrastructures.